Russia's like 38. Brazil. I thought Germany would have quite a few, because there's a lot of German ham publications you can get, or is it just a few oh, hams that's right all the No, they've got, they got 70,000. 70, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. So there's the... But, yeah, most of um, the hams are in about a dozen countries. Yeah. Oh, well. Like, there's only... Um, let's see. 23 countries have more than 10,000 hams. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 
now, what have I... I did have something to speak to you about, Peter, but I've forgotten what it was. Oh, well. We'll do it next time. And, um... But uh, the various posts have been uh, quite fascinating at Royal Travels. Uh, posts? Where, where do you get them from? Oh, um, oh, I think called social media. Oh, is that what she was doing all the time? Oh, <laughs> oh dear. So nothing's, nothing's sacred. Yes, social media. Oh, I should get in. No, I don't want to get into that. Um, yeah. Okay, well, look, we've done the, it's at half past... Well, social media, really, is amateur radio. All the other things don't really work. <laughs> That's right. Um, well, look... I mean, face shit bugware. It, it even ruined a computer on Linux, let alone oh, a Windows one. Really? It's unusable. Oh, very sad. Um, anyway, anyone listening, the stream's up again, and, um, so, uh, we'll be on 160, and, uh, I guess next week we'll be on 2 metres as well. So if you want to have a uh, conversation, uh, you have to use 145.3 or something. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, it is half past. I might, I've still got jet lag. And uh, good to speak to you, uh, Chris and uh, Ralph, John and Peter. A little live segment at the end of the, the night here. And, um... Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting it tonight. I was in the computer and I was just have a look and see what's yeah. down. And this is, I came on and that's, that's it. Yeah, well, that's right. I've come from the Arctic where it's been 30 degrees and now it's <laughs> much colder here. But that's uh, all, all to the bad. Well, look, well, I... Yeah, it would have been summer there. It would have been bright summer. It doesn't get dark. It, it's just brilliant sunlight day and night. So, uh, yeah... Okay, well look, I think I'll... I'll yeah, it would be interesting to go to a place where you see the sun going round and round and round rather than going overhead, which would be a bit like that there, wouldn't it? Well, it is. Up up north, well, up <coughs> anywhere north of the Arctic or the uh, south of the the Antarctic line, um, you get, um, yeah, the sun never sets. Um, it's a big thing to go to North Cape and look at the sun setting or, or the, no, never setting, just dips into the horizon and back again. So uh, the trouble is they have six months of darkness. I think they get very depressed. Did you see any auroras up there? <laughs> you can't see an aurora when it's sunlight all day. Oh, no, because it was summer. You'd have to go there in winter. The thing, Nigel, just yeah. relayed the question. Obviously, yes, but you wouldn't have. Of course, all the videos and photographs of auroras, it's always freezing cold and snow. Yeah, you have to do it in winter, yeah. And I think, why don't they go camping in the Aurora Zone in the summer? <laughs> well, well of because it's daylight and you can't see them. That's right. Yes, it's, uh, it's that's the problem. It's, um, but, uh, oh, well, they're all very good. Silly me. Anyway, I will close down and we'll see you all next week. Um, we'll have all networks running, hopefully. And um, while I was away, I think the last week or two, the, uh, the big storms and... One yeah, I think it's Tuesday the 18th. I think it is. That was very pretty. OK. Yeah, Nigel wasn't quite tuned in. He asked if he saw auroras, but he didn't realise... Realise, yeah, he's, 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 he's holding out of it. Yeah, you've got to go in the, in the winter. Uh, in the, yeah, in the winter to see an aurora. You can go down to Tasmania and see quite a good one if the conditions are right. I've never been to Tasmania. Well, it's quite good and there's very good auroras down there. I don't think those towers are still in Kelso. I think they've been demolished. Oh, no! You could have bought that station. You could have been down there in the Art Deco transfer. Well, except they didn't advertise it till after it had been sold because it was a newly listed thing when Anthony and Clyde was already sold. Sounds like the suspect deal's going on. Well, it's like how the ABC used to advertise jobs when someone in the ABC was going from one place to the other. They did interview all these people. No one would get the job because the job was already taken before they even ran the interviews. It's the same thing with, with Kelso and, and the real estate agents. Look, you could have worked, you could have lived at Kelso, you could have worked just down the road a bit is the Beaconsfield gold mine. You could have worked down the gold mine. Oh, where the, where the things fell in and those people got Yeah, trapped. it's just about 10k down the road. Oh, and yeah? You could have been working in the gold mine. Well, I don't know. We want to work in a gold mine, but I don't know. And you could have been almost crushed to death for five weeks till they drilled a hole and got right, you out. That's what happened. I remember that. 
<laughs> Wouldn't you love it being stuck down a mile? Well, how about mile? those Asian boys that were stuck in that thing in Thailand or wherever it was um, when, when it suddenly flooded, that cave? That's right, they had to use hay to talk to them. That's right, they were in invented by Mr. Hay in England. That's and right. 85 kilohertz up the sideband. That's right, yes, long, long wave hay to talk in the mine. That's right, yeah, well, that's how the underground things work. I mean, they've had things on that sort of frequency for quite a long time that talk underground. Now, if you'd use a hay phone, oh, put it in a big tin, and you'd probably get out quite well. Well, yes. Well, you could it. make a thing like that, and uh, it was scientific license, no one would notice this anyway. In fact, no one would really notice this anyway. They wouldn't care. They would, yeah, so uh, they're stuck in the mine. But, uh, yes, I think being stuck down would be the worst thing. And It'd be pretty scary. Oh, it would be, yes. <laughs> oh, well, it was good news for them um, in, in the end, anyhow. But at least they had space to walk around. Um, the guys in the beacon field were stuck, crushed into a little cage. They couldn't move. Oh, God, that'd be yeah, terrible. that would have been terrible. Absolutely. I don't know. Uh, you'd go mental. Oh, I just couldn't stand yeah, it. Yeah, would be so claustrophobic. You'd go yeah, nuts. You would. And there was always a chance it was going to collapse more, and they'd just be... Oh, no. Yep, and they'd be very careful. And then there was that other place in the snowy mountains where the hotel stood Oh, down. yes, that's right. People one... got trapped in that. And, oh, uh, only one person survived. Yeah, that's right, and that wasn't very nice either. Terrible. I, uh, I don't like those sort of things. I'm always suspect about, you know, if I stay in a hotel in a high building, what if there's a, a quake? It might collapse on me. Yes, and of course now we know that uh, although they used to say skyscrapers won't collapse, they can do progressive collapse like the World Trade Trade Center did for a number of reasons. And yes. Some have just spontaneously done that in some countries since then. So I don't know whether I'd like to buy a unit at the top of Eureka Tower or somewhere because it might do that one day. I know. Can you imagine if it collapsed and you had to go to this, the the uh, the insurance man said, my, my, my house, my unit doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It just disappeared. Yeah, of course, they sold real estate in there. Now, when the building collapses, you've got non-existent real estate where you just pay rates on air and have to live in air. Well, that's, you bought something a thousand feet, a, a square area a thousand feet in the sky, so if the building collapses, you have do to you still own that bit? Well, I mean, you probably do. <laughs> you have to, if to use it, you have to build a tower, a guide tower. Or pay for someone to keep it there in a helicopter. Yeah. Or you could go up there with a blimp, suck the air in, go down somewhere and put the air, like on a beachfront, and say, this is the air from there, I own this beach, because the yeah, air that's right, there. yes. And, and then you could build a, a house there and you say, well, it's my place. I just towed it from the air down to here. Well, I suppose it's one way. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you could have been living in Kelso. Uh, the Art Deco rooms, the tower. Well, it looked like quite a big building, too. It was, yeah. And with a few shipping containers and things we could have put on there and made them into things. Mm. And, and the tower, you could have put skirts on there to make it effectively a 160-metre multi-element collinear. So you could have. So it out really well. Yes. Because... Uh, I think they were about, what, about 600 feet high. Yeah. So you could make good. them two elements in phase, mm. or even three maybe if the bottom bit was a quarter wave, because the radial system would have been good enough for that. So you might have been able to get a ground pane with two half waves in phase above it, and that would have got out very well. It certainly would have. Well, you never know, more AM stations might come up if they close some down. You might be able to buy Gippsland, ABC Gippsland. What would have been good was to buy the Amiga Tower. <laughs> I know, that was such a waste when they demolished that. Because people were base jumping off there, they, they demolished it. Well, I thought it would have been good when the tower was there to buy that. Uh, I don't know how well VHF would have got into Melbourne from the top of it. It might have. Well, I think it would have. And um, I, if I bought it, had it bought it, I would have said, OK, I'll set up a base jumping company, people can... You'd set that'd up be your cash flow to spend money on missions from. Yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd set up safety things and say, okay, it costs two hundred dollars to climb up and yeah, jump off the tower. Yeah, you make it like it's a theme park, but it's also your amateur radio. Yeah, yeah. And I think people from around the world would come and base jump. Oh, they probably would, because it'd be a world famous thing once it got going. It certainly would. Well, look, we're wasting good crossband material. This isn't even being logged. I think. 
Well, haven't you logged it? No. Oh, I thought that we were going to hear it replay one day. Well, we would have, but I wasn't even going to come on. Oh. And I, I thought you just had a button you could press and it would log. You've got to use tape there, haven't you? Well, it's just that things aren't that reliable. I had a replay on until just before you came up, then I... Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm not on two. Ralph and a few others were on having a conversation, so I wasn't on two. And I came in, and then um, uh, it just became a bit of a cross band, and I wasn't even going to log it. And, and Ralph was noisy, I wasn't going to log the noise. And then that, you know how it happened, so we'll have to keep that script. And we'll put that in the script book and we'll we'll continue it. Well, perhaps someone logged it somewhere and we can then get some people to transcribe it to a script and everyone can read their parts next time. I think that's what we'll have yes, to do. Yes, this has been recorded. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, well, someone did record it. Oh, good. Well, that's good well, that... Um, long probably did. Yes, that's right. Well, it's good you've done that, and uh, we'll, look, uh, i still got jet lag, um, I hate travelling in jets and the time it takes. And the... Well, I wish I could afford an overseas trip in the first place. <laughs> well, you pay thousands of dollars to sit in the tube, it's almost as bad as being in the Beaconsfield mine. You've got about as much space. <laughs> and, um, it's, uh, yes, yeah, it wouldn't be much fun, I don't think. <coughs> Okay, well, look, we'll, I will say morning now, and we'll catch up with you all later on. So VK3ASC is closing down on uh, only 160 and 80 metres tonight. And um, we'll, um, we'll say morning to our listeners. So cheerio, VK3ASC3KV, uh, cheers and over, and over and out.